fall heaven and earth as my witnesses against you right now. I have set life and death, blessing and curses before you. That's quite a choice, isn't it? God tells us, of course, to choose life, which according to God means loving the Lord your God, obeying God, obeying God's commandments, and holding fast to God, clinging to God. Now, when we choose death, and I really think here we're talking more spiritually than physically, uh, we can't exactly choose our death um, physically. When we're, when we're talking spiritually, though, we are in essence, when we talk about choosing death or curses, we are, if it's just the opposite of what God says about life, then we are choosing to turn away from God. We choose to go in a completely different uh, direction, to follow other gods. This is really appropriate timing as we come into uh, the Lent season and uh, as we focus on that turning to God and focusing on God. But notice what God does say. We do have a choice. God says, I set before you a choice, life or death. You know, you've got brains in your head and, and uh, shoes in your feet. So you've got feet in your shoes, I guess. So you've got a way to choose, is what God is saying here. God says, let me tell you where those choices will lead. They will lead to, if you choose life, to blessings. If you choose death, to curses. Because God is life, and God does know us, and knows what we need. As I was reading this, the verse from the uh, prophet Jeremiah came up to me, and uh, so I wrote it down here. I know this is what, this, is, this explains, I think, exactly what, what God is saying here. I know the plans I have in mind for you, declares the Lord. They are plans for peace, not disaster to give you a future filled with hope. So how do we choose God? How do we choose life? What does that mean? What does it look like? What, what does it mean to get up every day and say, I choose life. I choose blessings. What it means is that we are choosing to go on the path that God has set before us. And the prophet Jeremiah fits this perfectly, too, as we read on in that. When you call me and come and pray to me, I will listen to you. When you search for me, yes, search for me with all of your heart, you will find me. God says, just talk to me. Just ask me. Pray to me. Ask me, what do you want me to do with this day, God? Take me where you need me. Use me and go ahead of me and lead the way. I struggle a lot with that. Uh, I, on and off, I still do, and I have to remember that so many times in the morning when I'm, when I'm trying to figure out what should I do with my day? Where, where am I needed the most? Uh, what's the priorities here? And I'm confused. I don't know what to do. Uh, I'm reminded to just say, you know what, God, you, you set my path today. You let you choose for me where I'm going to go. Um, that was really, that hit me for me about 10 years ago. I think I talked about a, a time when I worked at Augustana uh, Senior Living Care Center in Minneapolis. Um, a huge senior living facility and then had a care facility, about 600 people. And uh, I was a chaplain intern there and I got to live there and they paid my rent for helping with the chaplain duties. Um, and it was a busy place. It was a really busy place. And between that and all of my studies, um, I was kind of feeling a little overwhelmed. And as I'm sure you all know in your days when you feel that way. And I can remember sitting down one morning and just raising my hands and saying, you know what, God, I don't know. You take me today. I don't, I don't know what's the most important thing to do here. You lead my day. You, you do it. So I got up and I walked out of my apartment and I went to the elevator. Immediately there was the elevator opened and there was a, another lady there that lived there. First thing she said is, I am so glad I taught you. 
She said, there's a couple that was up on a couple floors up, uh, Reuben, Helen, Pedersen, and they were having some problems. She had fallen and, and hurt her back. She was in a lot of pain, and she was refusing to go to the doctor. They were missionaries, former missionaries, to Tanzania. And they were both right around 90 years old at the time. And uh, so I went up there, and sure enough, they, she was in a lot of pain. And I said, you know, probably really should get to the, the hospital. Um, they were very brutal, I think, because of their being missionaries and that. She didn't want to pay for the ambulance. So I said, well, I'll take it. Let's go over to the hospital. Got all their walkers loaded and everything, and we went over to the hospital, which was only about three blocks away. And uh, got her checked in and waited, and had an absolutely wonderful time just sitting there and visiting with them and hearing of all these experiences. They were missionaries in Tanzania for about 30 years, I believe. Um, had, a, had a lot of uh, different jobs while they were there, but uh, I tell you what, if you ever, if you know any missionaries or you ever come across one, just thank them for what they do. It's unbelievable. Uh, and it was even more unbelievable what they did back in the 40s and 50s uh, when they, they didn't have a lot of the technology that we have today. So we had a great visit. They did decide to keep Helen because she had just outrageous blood. Her blood pressure was off the scale. Uh, so they said, we're, we're keeping you in the hospital. Then we had to figure out what to do with Ruth because he couldn't be left alone. And uh, so I called this friend that had first talked to me about it. And she said, you know, I've got a gal that, that cleans my apartment. And uh, she also works in the care center. She said, let me call her. She might, she might just come over and spend the night with you. So she called, and she called me back. And she said, well, she's working, but she said her husband is an RN, and he's not doing anything tonight. So he said he would go sit throughout the night. I thought, okay, that works out right. So we got them all set. Here's the thing. This guy, who they didn't know each other at all, and he was several years younger than Rube, grew up in Tanzania. <laughs> and so, and then very close to the same area that Rube and Helen had spent for 30 years. So I got there the next morning and visited with Rube, and he said, I have the best night. We visited, we compared people and places. He said, I just enjoyed his company so much. <laughs> Dear God, take my day. Do with it what you can. Only God could have produced that whole scene. And that's what happens when we first say, God, I give it to you. Use me where you need me. First of all, we choose God. We choose life. And then we ask God to direct our path. And God will put opportunities to glorify and serve him right directly in our path. And God's opportunities to serve and glorify will always, always lead to life. Life in Christ. We do have a choice. Let's end with the word of prayer. God... You've given me brains in my head and feet in my shoes. And you come to me and say, I'm the one who must choose. Life or death. Will I be cursed? Will I be blessed? Help me to choose life. Help me to choose what is best. Today, tomorrow, and every day after, may I choose you. In Jesus' name, and all of God's children say,
congregation to positions of leadership. We give thanks for their willingness to serve. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. We rejoice now that these sisters and brothers will lead us in our common life and our mutual mission as a congregation. A reading from 1 Corinthians. There are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. You have been elected to positions of leadership and trust in this congregation. You are to see that the words and deeds of this household of faith bear witness to God, who gathers us into one together with the whole church. You are to seek to involve all members of this congregation in worship, learning, witness, service, and support, so that the mission of Christ is carried out in this congregation, in the wider church, in this community, and in the whole world. You are to be faithful in your specific area of serving, that the Spirit who empowers you may be glorified. You are to be examples of faith, active in love, fostering peace, harmony, and mutual understanding in this congregation. On behalf of the sisters and brothers in Christ, I ask you, will you accept and faithfully carry out the duties of the offices to which you have been elected? If so, you can respond, I will, and I ask God to call I will, and I ask God to call And to the congregation, people of God, I ask you, will you support these, your elected leaders, and will you share in the mutual ministry that Christ has given to all who are baptized? <coughs> if so, uh, please respond, we will, and we ask God to help us. We will, and we ask God to help us. I now declare you installed as council members of this congregation. I'm not going to let you go. <laughs> Almighty God bless you and direct your days and your deeds in peace, that you may be faithful servants of Christ. Amen. Thank you.
all of those in need. Shepherding God, you protect and guide us with your word. Lead your church into ever closer relationship with you, that we might better know your commands. Hold fast to your decrees and live in your law. Lord, in your mercy. God of the cosmos, heaven and earth bear witness to the splendor of all you have created. Bless the ground, trees, waterways, and skies with abundant life. Restore synergy between humankind and the natural world, that we may live in harmony with the world you have made. Lord, in your mercy. God of peace, you show solidarity with all who suffer. Bring an end to violence, war, discrimination, and all other forms of deadly hate, that we may experience your love through the power of justice. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of hope, you provide bountifully for all people. Use our lives to alleviate global injustice and eliminate poverty, that all benefit from the abundant gifts you pour out for your people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of health and well-being, you are near to those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit. Be with those who seek relief from depression, anxiety, pain, or illness. We especially pray today for Kevin Hofkeiser, Mary L. Miller, Joyce Rupin, Chris Nelson, Bob Amison, Brent Peters, Joan Peterson, Lon Peterson, Renee Dowell, those homebound, and all those whom we personally name either out loud or in our hearts at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God of growth, you nurture this community. Cultivate in us a spirit of service to one another, and bless us in the ministry we share. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God of our ancestors, Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebecca, Jacob and Leah and Rachel, we give you thanks for our forebears in the faith, who now rest in your eternal grace and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Confident that you are able to accomplish more than we even dare to ask, we bring these prayers before you, believing in your saving grace revealed in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 